Hey guys, it's May May, and as you would have seen in the thumbnail today, we are making another paper purse. But this one's a little different. When I made my last paper purse, which I will link here for you guys to see that video, several people asked me if it would hold A2 size greeting cards. Well, that one doesn't, but I wanted to develop one that would, so I did some Pinterest searching, and I realized that people are already doing this, so I'm just gonna do my version of it, and you'll be able to see what I come up with. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a piece of paper. This is cardstock, at Actually, that is 10 and a quarter by 11 so this was one 12 inch piece of paper and I cut some down to make this work okay so with your cardstock in your scoreboard on the 10 and a quarter inch side okay you're gonna do these scores you're gonna score at two inches and you're gonna score at eight and a quarter we're basically turning boxes into purses that's basically what we're doing so I've got two score lines there now I'm gonna turn it to the 11 inch side see this and I'm gonna score it at four and a half and six and a half. Right there. So we're just gonna build a box. So let me show you how this works. All you need to do on these sides are make some cuts. Just two straight cuts at these little score marks that come to the edge of the page. I'll show you this up close in just a second. So basically, we've got our score line on this end and we're cutting these two score lines up to where they intersect. Now, I find it handy to cut some little angles out to take some bulk away. That's all these little slits do right here. They just take a little bulk out of that tab. So whenever you fold this up, you can get a, a squarer fold, if that's a word, <laughs> who knows? Same thing on this end, we're gonna slice this score and we're gonna slice this score. So now, as you can see, I wanna put this into the screen for you to be able to see it. We've got our slices and our little angles and don't worry if those angles are ugly, you're not gonna see those, okay? Now let's do some folding. I'm gonna go ahead and fold everything on the score lines just to get it going. Not really bone folding or anything at this point, just trying to get those so we can see them. Sometimes when you're working with um, solid color cardstock, it's hard to see your lines, but if you go ahead and fold, you can see them real easy. Now this is the inside of my bag because of the way I folded it. This is the outside. Let's go ahead and mat all our panels. Now for your panel pieces, I'm gonna lay these out so you can see how this is gonna work. Our front panels are gonna take pieces that are four and a quarter tall by six wide, okay? So four and a quarter by six on the front and the back. Then you're just gonna need two pieces for these side panels, and I cut them out of the same paper, but I'm actually gonna use the back side, and they're just gonna go on one side. Now when you lay your mats out, you're gonna do it like this. This is the front of the bag and the sides that are gonna show. This is the back of the bag and these sides are gonna have adhesive and be hidden. So I want you to see how to lay your mats out to make this easy. For me, this is a very super easy way to do it. Now we just have to glue these down. So I'm just gonna glue these down while I've got them like this. And to let you know, this is the eight ounce bottle of art glitter glue that we carry in the store. And this is the new red tips that we've got in for that. When you purchase this bottle, it doesn't come with a tip. This tip is a separate purchase. So that way you don't have to have the smaller bottles. You can just have the bigger bottle, but totally up to you. I use it so much that I like the big bottle. <laughs> I'm constantly using my art glitter glue for something. So I got that panel glued down. Now I'm gonna glue these side panels. I'm thinking I might leave them plaid. I like the plaid side. I think I'm gonna leave them on the plaid side. Put the glue on the back. Put that into place. I don't think I told you the dimensions of these panels. These are one and three fourths by four and a quarter. Totally forgot. By the way, all the measurements will be on the blog today so you can get those. And with this crazy cold head I've had, you might wanna check out the blog measurements first to make sure I don't say anything wrong in this video like I did on my last little purse. But I went back and did a little fix. All right, so there's that. Let's do this one. Now, I told you, this is the front of the purse, this is the back of the purse. Here's what's gonna happen. When we fold it up, this little flap is gonna go on the inside. This piece is gonna get glued underneath this piece. So our purse will have its little mats already on when we finish, okay? So I'm gonna add sticky tape. I just think that I like to use sticky tape whenever I want to be in a hurry and not hold it and wait for anything to dry. So I'm gonna add my adhesive to this plain side that doesn't have a mat on it. Another one of those projects that might be best to watch me start to finish before you do it because I'm trying to save some, some time by letting you lay this out while it's flat. Let's remove the adhesive backer from one side. Okay, 
and then we're gonna assemble this one. And we'll put this flap on the inside. Then this piece comes in and this piece goes over. Now go ahead and square this up before you press it into place. You can do that just by looking. And because we cut those little edges off of the inside flap, that's how we get to get such a nice square because we're not trying to tuck in a thick square piece. The angles take some of the bulk out, okay? So, and I'll show you what I mean by that. These angles allow us to get a nice square whenever we're putting these guys together. Those little angles we cut off of that flap just take the bulk away. So now we'll just square this guy up and then seal it down. And I've done that all the way around. So now because we did our uh, mats while it was laying flat, we don't have to try to do that when it's already done. Although you can put your mats on at any time, but now we're ready to make it look like a purse. It just looks like a box, doesn't it? Okay. So I wanna create a little frilly piece that will lay over the top of this purse to make it look more like a purse, okay? So I cut this little strip that is six inches long by two inches wide. I wanna put this into my scoreboard and I'm going to score it at one and three fourths. The reason for this, this is gonna be the little piece that folds down over the top of my purse to hold it in place. Now, the front edge of this, I'm gonna use a border punch. I have my scallop scallop punch. That sounds repetitive, but the scallops in this punch are actually scalloped, that's why it's called that. And I'm gonna lay this little piece into this punch. I'm gonna start with one edge of the paper all the way to the edge of the punch. That way, I know that I can make my scallops match front and back. So now I have this little piece that's scalloped on the edge, probably really hard for you to see like that. But I went ahead and did two of these pieces, okay? Now I'm gonna flip them over, and where I did that little um, score mark, I wanna put some adhesive on the inside of that. So I'm gonna run some sticky tape down that edge, and guess what? My sticky tape is wider than that quarter of an inch piece that I scored, and that's not gonna matter. That extra adhesive that's hanging over the score line is just gonna help stick it into place even better. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I'm only gonna adhere this down at the top, so that will just kinda help it be more sturdy. It's basically gonna be free on one edge. So I'm gonna remove the adhesive backer, and using that score mark at the top, okay, I'm gonna place this onto my bag and it will go even with the mat piece. It's not gonna run all the way down the purse. It's gonna be even with the mat. So you see how that is? It's just a little flap and it's loose on one end. I'm doing that on purpose, okay? And then it's just sealed down inside and it looks nice and clean. So I'm gonna do that on the front and the back. So lay this guy down, remove this adhesive backer, get that little fold going. And then, and you can line it up flat and then bring it into place, that'll be fine. So if I do it this way, maybe you can see better what I'm doing. Just line the score line up with the top of the bag and then tuck it around. Just to give you these little flaps. And right now they don't look like much, but they will when we finish, they'll be super cute. Now let's talk handles. I decided to use orange for my handles. These are one and a quarter by 12 inches. I want a chubby handle on this purse. You might not want your handles to be quite as chubby as these, but I think it'll be cute. So these are one and a quarter by 12, and these are also one and a quarter by 12 inch strips of coordinating colored paper. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna border punch both sides of this strip, because I want a scalloped edge piece to go through the middle of that strap. And the reason I cut it the same width as the strap itself is so that whenever I do this border punching, I'll still have plenty of strip left to show in the middle, and I won't have this little bitty skinny stripe instead of, you know, a thicker piece because of these chubbier handles. So you can see here the strips that I border punched on both ends, and these are my solid strips. I'm just gonna adhere these strips down to those. Now, if all of this um, border punching is a little too much for you, this is also a perfect place for ribbon. So don't think you have to do all this punching or have to have these, um, all these punches in your collection. Think about ribbon. This is a great spot to add a piece of ribbon. Now these handles are gonna attach to the front and I'm still not gonna adhere this down. I want this to still kind of be loose, this little piece here, even though these are gonna kind of hold that in place. Now there's a couple things I wanna do first. One is I want to round the edges of these strips because I think they'll look cleaner and neater. So I'm just gonna put this into my corner chomper and round them on the half inch. 
You could do the quarter inch side if you didn't want it to be quite so rounded. So the next thing I'm gonna do is use my crocodile. And I don't know if you have a crocodile, but you, if you do, you have this little piece that you can set in place so you can get the same distance or the same depth of the hole punch every time. I set mine on half an inch, and I'm gonna use the 1 8 inch hole to do this. I'm just gonna eyeball center this handle and push it to that, that guide on the side and then poke a hole. This way I know on both ends I'll be the same depth. I might not be perfectly centered, but my hole is going to be the same depth there. So I'm just poking a 1 8, one eight inch hole. We're going to put these onto the bag a little bit differently, a different way than I've ever shown you how to do it before. Um, you could use brads here, but I want to show you something super cute and easy. Another little tip I want to show you. If you're going to make a bunch of these bags, and I foresee myself doing that, especially for Mother's Day, I'm going to make myself a 6 inch strip of scrap paper, and I'm going to make a template for the holes that I want to poke into here for my handles. Here's how I'm going to do it. With this 6 inch strip of paper, it doesn't really matter how wide it is as long as I have this little piece. I'm going to take my crocodile. I'm going to drop this guide back to 3 quarters of an inch this time, which if you don't have this crocodile, just make a mark on your paper 3 quarters of an inch in. All right, and then I'm just going to drop this page in to that guide, center it, and poke a hole. See that? Now I'm gonna take this and fold it in half, and I'm gonna make a hole in the very same spot. So now I don't even have to worry about the guide. I'm just gonna look through to the hole itself and make it in the same spot. And this will then become my template for poking the holes on the bag, and I'll know it's in the same spot on both sides. So I can just lay this over. Then I'll take my crocodile, place it over that hole, and poke. So then I'll do the other side the same. Now I told you I was going to show you a different way to put the handles on. I'm going to use four buttons, and these buttons aren't perfect matches. They're pretty similar, but they're not perfect. Some baker's twine. I have this dental threader that I've shown you guys before that comes in the, dentry, the dentist or the tooth care section of your uh, pharmacy or Walmart, what have you. This is for threading um, dental floss through braces, but it also works for baker's twine, believe it or not. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. The first thing I'm gonna do to make this not quite so difficult is I'm gonna put a little bit of sticky tape on the back of these handles right above the hole that I poked for them. That's just gonna hold my handle into place while I do this button work. So a little bit of sticky tape on both sides right above the hole, okay? Just as a little place holder, basically, okay? So I'm going to peel the backer off of those. Then I'm gonna go ahead and peel the backer off of both ends. And I'm gonna bring my bag over. And I'm gonna go ahead and line the hole up, sticking that handle into place with that adhesive. Now, for this part, I get a question, I get a lot of questions about this. Watch what I do. I put my hand behind this strap and I just bring it around leaving the white or the strip in the middle showing we're not twisting the handle we're just bringing it around and it makes that little curve which looks super cute now that's not permanent that's not gonna hold that there forever but the buttons are what we're fixing to do is gonna make this work so we're gonna take these buttons and I'm gonna thread them with some Baker's twine real quick I'm just gonna thread one of them to start to use that dental threader you just run that Baker's twine through it and then run it through one of the buttons on one side. Then I'm gonna run it back through. Okay, so what I've got here is my button threaded this way and that thread hanging out. Now I wanna run this through the back of the bag, the hole in the back. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna run all of this through my dental threader. So now I've threaded that onto my dental threader, okay? And I'm coming to the back of the bag or the inside of the bag, run this baker's twine through the back and watch what will happen. That button is gonna stop in the back. See that? So it's basically creating a stop. This is just so if you don't wanna have a brad showing, you can do this this way. Now the next thing I wanna do is take these two pieces, okay? I'm gonna thread one of them there's one hole in, in the button that's going on the front. These dental threaders are so handy. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the other one <laughs> and thread it through another hole of the button. I couldn't do this without this threader. I would lose my mind trying to do this. Now then, I can tie this into place and it's gonna permanently hold 
my um, handle on and also be clean on both sides. It'll look nice and neat. So I'm gonna tie a couple, just a knot, a good knot to hold that into place. And then I can tie a little bow. You don't even have to have the bow. You could just do the knot and you could come back and put some bling or something on top of it if you wanted to. And then just trim these pieces off. Okay, so now we end up with a button on the front and on the inside. Look how clean that looks, right? I think that looks really neat. So I'm gonna do that over here too. I think this is super cute. It kind of gives it a actual purse feel because it's got buttons and I think that's cute. And I think your mom will think, oh, how cute, how do they get these buttons on both sides? I think it'll be cute. Cute is my word for this one. Okay, so I'm gonna cut away and do that on the back and we'll have both our handles in place. So now you can see my handles in place and look on the front I use yellow buttons, on the back I use green. I'm really trying to step outside of my comfort zone and use lots of different colors on this bag. I think that's a cute idea. And I think it's really kind of mixed up. I love the sturdiness of these handles. And one reason I wanted to do this kind of button holding them on is because you're gonna put greeting cards in here and give this away. And if the person wants to store those cards in there, you'll really want these handles to be on nice and sturdy. And this way, they're not gonna tear out. Plus they have a little adhesive in there. That's basically the bag assembled. Let me show you what it looks like with cards in it. Now you have a couple options. These are those pre-made cards that I get from Michaels on the hot buy whenever they have them for like five or six bucks. And you get a whole bunch in there, right? I'm going to use some of those to put inside our bag, but you could certainly pre-make some cards. This is 10 cards in 10 envelopes and look how much space you're going to have when you fill this up with your cards. You could easily get 20 cards and 20 envelopes in there. And I made it so that they weren't snug super tight because I want them to be able to kind of get in there and get them out without having to really rip the bag apart to do it. All this needs is a tag. Let's make one. So I have two pieces of paper. I have an orange piece that is two by three and this piece is a quarter of an inch small. So it's two and three quarters by one and three quarters and it's actually a piece of scrap paper That's got pattern on the back that was from where I got my handle inserts from so I'm gonna stamp on this one And I'm gonna stamp happy Mother's Day So from my stamp set called happy I'm gonna use the word happy and the word Mother's Day real quick and show you how this works I've laid it out on that piece of um, White paper and I'm just kind of lining it up kind of where I want it and I'm gonna pick that up with a block and that makes this super easy. So just do it like that. And now they're where I want them. And now we can ink them up and stamp it. Now I'm gonna turn that into the to a tag. I'm gonna use my angle punch. This is an old punch from uh, We Are Memory Keepers that they have discontinued. And I cannot find it anymore to link it for you guys. But if you have it, this is a perfect place for it. If you don't have it, you can just take your scissors and just measure off a little spot and snip it and you'll get a little tag. So now I'm just going to glue these guys together. You guessed it, poke a hole at the top and it's ready to tie on. Now I'm just going to take some Baker's twine and I'm going to tie this onto my bag with the Baker's twine. Now this would be a super cute place for you to hang like a charm or something like that off of the side of this little bag. I know if I gave this to my mom, she would probably put this on her desk where her little work surface is. And then whenever she needed a card, she would just go to it and pull one out. And it would be like a permanent fixture. So putting a little charm on there would be really, really cute. I'm just gonna tie this little knot to hold the tag in place. So now it says Happy Mother's Day. Let me trim some of that away. And look, we have our little Happy Mother's Day purse and greeting card gift. Now imagine if you had this loaded with handmade cards. What a beautiful gift this would be. I cannot wait to see how you guys recreate this. If you make this purse or any project for Mother's Day, share it with us over on our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. We would love to see it. I love seeing what you guys make. I'm pulling this little bow out so it's not flat in there. There we go. So now it's around the little tag. So I love to see what you guys make. Head over and join the group and show us what you're doing. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little um, gift for Mother's Day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.